Salon Ackerman from Miracle Christian Fellowship Church, the place where miracles happen daily. We want to invite you to every Tuesday from 5 to 7.30 p.m. Friday night, Jesus. miracle healing, deliverance, and prophetic service at 7.30 p.m. And on Sunday morning, we have a Sunday school at 9.45 and worship service starts at 10.30. We also have a, a very powerful breakfast. Amen. I call it powerful Amen. because it, it has everything you need on this breakfast. Amen. And, and you can eat and really sleep off. <laughs> That's how enjoyable it is. And it is supplied by uh, professional caterers. So it's for whoever that comes is free. I also want to let you know that at the end of this month, the second, the third, and the fourth of December, the flyers are already here. We're going to give, it, give them to you before you leave. We are having a breakthrough miracle crusade. Hallelujah. Three times a year. This is the last one. Amen. It's actually preparing you for 2023. Amen. There is no way you will come to this that you won't get into 2023. Mm -hmm. We have special, we have so many guest speakers. People ask me, why do you have many speakers? You know, we have different speakers. Everybody, because Amen. everybody has Amen. virtue. God yes. is giving yes. to everyone a measure of faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. Apostle Thibault from Lafayette, Louisiana, Amen. will be one of our speakers. Amen. Amen. Bishop, um, Bishop Ben Cara from Lafayette, Louisiana, will be one of our speakers. Um, Saturday is a prophetic service at 6 p.m. Pastor James Dad, one of my spiritual sons, will preach. And Apostle, um, Apostle Judy Bear will be joining the preaching. And Sunday morning, Dr. Davis Lanry Iowa will be coming from Laredo, Texas. Doctor in pharmacy, but he's a great preacher. Just opened up a church now over there. He will be preaching for us in the morning service on the on Sunday the fourth. And it's at, and, and we're gonna celebrate my birthday on that morning service. Amen. 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 And then at 4 p.m., Pastor Howard Brigham from New York will be preaching for us at 4 p.m. the grand finale. And also Apostle uh, Eva Spears, one of my spiritual son from Dallas, Texas. Amen. We want to invite all of you to join us. Then right after that, I will be in Fresno, California mm -hmm. for a miracle healing crusade Amen. at the Romada University, 324 East Shore Avenue. Those who are watching right now in California and around the world. Uh, three, uh, three, 324 East Shore Avenue, Fresno, California. We want everybody all over California to fly in, join us at this hotel, this, this special miracle crusade, starting on Tuesday, 7 p.m., Wednesday, the, uh, Tuesday, the 6th, the 7th, and the 8th. Then I will fly into Los Angeles, California. Oh, my God. Okay. We will be at the Romana LAX Stadium for the 10th, Saturday, the 10th, Sunday, the 11th, and Monday, the 12th, at 7 p.m. And uh, it's going to be so powerful. We have so much to prepare for Amen. 2023. All right. Um, I, I, I want to talk to us tonight for the next few minutes mm -hmm. about something that people often overlook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I title my message tonight, Total Obedience. And I want to zero in tonight into certain areas that most people often overlook. So if you have a pen and a paper, I want you to write some things down tonight. Um, um, Rariki, give me offering envelopes. Give everybody one, one copy of offering envelope. I want to show you something that we just see we see this, the Holy Spirit was really dealing with me. He said a lot of people see a lot of um, a, 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 
a lot of um, names on the offering envelope. And we don't know what they mean. We hear, we hear of different names of them, but we don't know in the Bible and how powerful these names are. It, it is very dangerous for you to be in church and you are participating in everything and you have no idea as to what they give you before the service, the service ends. You don't know what they are. And you can't even tell me in the Bible, give me one, sir. You, you can't tell me in the Bible what each one represents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tonight, I want to start by asking you to turn to Isaiah, 8, Isaiah 1, 18 and 19. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. I humble myself uh, behind this platform tonight. And, I, and if there be anything in me that is not you, Lord, remove it tonight. I empty myself so that I can have a, an un, un, unadulterated world. Yes. Something that, that, that comes with fire tonight mm -hmm. that I can deliver to your people so that it can become meaningful to them in their lives Amen. as we walk out of this sanctuary. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Isaiah 1, 18 and 19. And I titled the message, Total Obedience. Mm -hmm. So I want to, first of all, give you uh, the writing. Mm -hmm. It says, the scripture says, say, Come now and let us reason together, mm -hmm. says the Lord God. Though your sins are like scarlet, meaning bright red colors, or become so deep. They shall be as white as snow, though they are red like crimson, mm -hmm. meaning dark purple, you know, it's describing the nature of one's past and one's sins. They shall become like wool. Meaning that once you come into God's presence, uh, no matter where you have been, no matter what, have, what you've been through in life, God wants to forgive us. He wants to cleanse you. When you live here today, your past is never going to be remembered. Amen. If you have Christ as Lord, if you receive him tonight as Lord and Savior of your life. Your yesterday will never be remembered. People around you will remember. Family members will remember. Job employees who knows your past will remember. But God never remembers. Oh yes. Yeah. So, and what is obedience? Obedience is defined right there now. Obedience, don't sleep on me tonight. Uh -huh. Obedience. The definition, of, the definition of obedience. Obedience is, is defined as a compliance mm -hmm. with an order, command, request, or law, or submission to another authority. That's what obedience is. Obedience is submitting, is the act of submission to so someone else's authority, taking God for instance, or taking the people God placed in, in, your, in your pathway for instance. Mm -hmm. That's what obedience means. Obedience means to obey, to obey in the Greek means to trust. When you, when, you, when you obey people, it means you trust them. We are obeying God because we trust Him. We are going to obey everything God tells us to do because we do what? Trust, trust Him. Because we have faith in Him. Because we rely on Him. Because we depend upon Him. Because without Him, I am nothing. 
Amen. I didn't bring myself to this platform to be a preacher. Yes. If he didn't call me, if I never heard from him, I wouldn't even venture to be around this kind of territory. Yes. So, um, obedience is to trust, to hear God, to hear God's word and act accordingly. That's what obedience means. Right. Obedience in the Greek means to trust, to hear, to hear God's word and act accordingly. Obedience is the supreme test. Write this down. Obedience is the supreme test of faith in God right. and reverence for him. That's what obedience means. So tonight, we're going to look at few, few, few names in the, in the envelope. As soon as this is given to you before you close, and everybody look at it, but we really don't know what they mean. So I'm going to jump on one, 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 just, you know, for the next 15 minutes, so we can pray for those who are here tonight. Mm -hmm. Taking the name tithes. What is tithes? We hear about it all the time. What is tithes? Go to Malachi chapter 3. From verse 6. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Malachi. I know that some of you are familiar with this text, but I want to give you something you probably never heard from before. Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Thank you, Lord Holy Ghost. Malachi chapter 3. From verse 6. Are you there? He said, For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your forefathers, you have turned aside from my status and have not kept them. He said, Now return to me. That's why I went to Isaiah 1 18 and 19. So there are several of us who have not been obeying God in this because we didn't know what it was. We have not been taught. So now God is saying, not knowing about giving me 10% is not the issue. Now I, have, I, I want you to return now. There's plenty of time for you to return. Malachi 3 from verse 6. It says, return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you ask, how shall we return? He said, verse 8, we demand rob God. So when we receive our, our income, and we are not giving God 10% of it, God said, you're robbing, you're, not rob, you're, you're robbing God, and you're robbing yourself. Amen. God said, I hate to see you rob yourself, right, and, rob, and rob him. Now, you know that was stealing from him. He said, now, we have good news tonight. He says, verse, verse 7, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yes, you have robbed me. But you say, how have we robbed you? In tithes and what? In offerings. Tithes and offerings. You are under a curse. In, for you have robbed me. The whole nation of you. Mm -hmm. That that statement always confused people who say, well, I'm born again. I'm not under a curse. Well, we are not under a curse if you're born again. But we can be demon influenced. When we are not obeying what God tells us to do, then we can be under a condemnation of God. That's why I use the word total obedience. A lot of us obey God, we don't steal, we don't do stuff, but we don't consider uh, this passage of the Bible as something that God said. So we, we, we cut it off, and we want to hear other aspects of the Bible, but we don't understand that this is something that God said. Alright, verse 11. We have good news tonight. Verse, verse 10. 
Are you in verse 10? He said, now what I want you to do from tonight, it's not too late for you. He said, bring the full tight into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no room, there is no more room to retain it. Woo! Hallelujah! He said, what I want you to do, I want to heal you tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I want to deliver you tonight. Amen. Amen. I want to restore your life tonight. Hallelujah. I want to restore everything back to you from tonight that you yes, have Lord. been missing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just like I said, I had those envelopes coming to me that have been forgotten for the past one month. Yes, yes. He says, all I want you to do is bring your tithes and your offerings. What does that mean? When you, let's say, you make a thousand dollars in two weeks, or oh, maybe let's just say that. So, so ten percent of that is a hundred dollars. So you add an offering to that according to your own faith. Yeah. Could be ten, could be twenty, could be ten. It depends on what your spirit tells you. Wow. So offering has no um, has no detail of of, of, a, of a percentage. But a tithe is always a tent. Amen. So once you do that and you put it in the envelope, you check, you see that's where it says tithe. So you have fulfilled part of the obedience. Mm. Some of people say, well, I have bills to pay. If God knew, God has God is aware of your bills. It's, a, it's aware of your commitment. It's aware of what you have to do with your personal money. But God says, if you trust me enough, yeah. mm -hmm. hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He okay. said, can you trust me enough if you come to me? Can you, can you rely on me enough that I will take care of you yeah. if you take care of God's work? This is why he says, I will, first of all, if you do that, number one, I will open you what? Windows of heaven. Yes. Windows of heaven. Oh, yeah. Number two, I will pour you out a yes. blessing. Yes. Number three, that you shall not have enough room. Woo! When you tithe, when you become a, a regular tither, yeah. mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not talking about money now. The things that come to us when you hear the word windows of heaven, yeah. windows of heaven is not just talking about money returning back to you. Mm -hmm. Windows of heaven right than that includes peace, mm -hmm. joy, uh, good health, protection as you drive out, as you come in. When you go to sleep, you are not choked. Number five, when the enemies rise up against you, Hallelujah. That you are not aware of. Mm -hmm. You know how people are jealous and, and they, they talk, they plan evil. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So God will, and, and you are not aware of it, but because you are a tighter, God will go ahead of you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And raise a standard. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God will go ahead of your boss. Oh, yes. Go oh, yes. ahead of people that work with you in your yes. workplace yes. who don't want to see you. Yes. God will go after your family members yes. who, who hates you. Yes. God will go after people that are trying to destroy you. Yes. God will make sure that he caused major confusion yes. in the enemy's camp. Yes. Amen. And every day by day you are just walking around. Yes. And they're looking at you like, is this person still alive? Oh yeah, you're yes. still alive. Yes. <laughs> because we'll be covered. Yes. We'll be covered with the spirit of obedience. Yes. Look at the neighbor, say neighbor. Yes. I'm, covered I'm covered with the spirit of obedience. With the spirit of obedience. Yes, Lord. Number level. Malachi 3 level. Look at all the benefits that you have been missing. 
and I will rebuke the devourer for you. All these things are for me and you. God don't need your money, but he wants to test your total obedience. He wants to see how much you call upon me every day. Do you really trust me? Oh, I trust you, Lord. Oh, I trust you. Okay, now, let me put you to test and see. I will rebuild the devourer for your sake. Mm. Meaning, every forces of the enemy that will rise up against you, God said, I will rebuild them before they get started. Oh, my mm. Then, I, I'm almost done. He says, this is, this is very interesting. Say, number, number level. I will rebuild the devourer for your sake, for you, so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil, and your vine in the field shall not fail to hear to, to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Twelve. Then this is the big one. All nations. People will always, everywhere you walk into, people will recognize you as a blessed woman. Amen. As a blessed man. Amen. They are glad to see you. Hallelujah. Because they know that by the end of the day, yeah. something supernatural. We come out of their hand in your pocket. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, that is start. Quickly, quickly. Tell us an offer. Then vows. What is vow? It's in, it's in the end of Look at it. Vow. What is vow? Why do they always put that vow? What does that mean? How do I act when it comes to vow? Just one more scripture. Go to Psalms 50. Before, before you go to vow, let me talk about seed of faith. Mm -hmm. Go to seed of faith, then I'll come to vow. Okay. Seed of faith. Do you see it on the envelope? Yes, sir. What does seed of faith mean? Mm -hmm. Turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8, from verse 8 to 16. Seed of faith. Seed of faith is a sacrificial of, of First Corinthians, I mean, uh, First Kings chapter 17, 8 through 16. First Kings chapter 17, 8 through 16. Our, sac uh, our seed of faith is a sacrificial offering that is outside your tithes and your offerings. And we we, um, we offer this to God um, sometimes a preacher who is God has anointed or a prophet that God has anointed can challenge you um, for a seed of faith. It, 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 it's, a, it, it's, it, it, it's a faith work that takes you beyond your tithes and offering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So giving a sacrificial offering is a, is a faith work that takes you beyond your usual norm of giving. Okay. First Kings 17, 8 through 16. Uh, because of the time that we have, this passage is talking about the widowed woman in Zarephath. So, God commanded Elijah to go to this city and that by the gate, he will find a widowed woman Amen. gathering sticks together. That this widowed woman will take care of him. You know, God never sends you out to do something and he don't make provisions for you. Amen. Just read a few parts of it if you see um, 1 Kings chapter 17. Read from verse, verse uh, let's read from verse 14. If you're there, quickly, 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 because I have to move forward. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Mm -hmm. The jar of flour will not Okay, so okay, now, when the prophet arrived at Zarephath, can you maybe just read the whole so we can understand it? Okay, verse eight. From verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Mm -hmm. Came to Elisha. Go at once. I mean Elijah. Mm -hmm. Go at once to Zarephath of Sidon mm -hmm. and stay there. 
I have commanded a widow in that in that place to supply. I want you to remember that at this time of of Israel, there was fam there was drought. Somebody can turn that thing down a little bit. Maybe it was said before. So there was uh, there was drought for three. There was no rain for three and a half years. So there was no food. Everything was scarce. The economy was completely in jeopardy. So uh, so God commanded Elijah to go to Zarephath. Mm -hmm. Yes. First of all, he was in the in the um, Elijah was uh, was by the tree of um, the brook dried up, and because the brook dried up, so God commanded Elijah now to go to this city that he will see a widowed woman. So this is where we are. Keep reading. Okay, so I commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. Mm -hmm. So he went to Zarephath. Yes. When he came to the town gate, mm -hmm. a widow was there gathering. Food. When he came to the city in, uh, uh, to, to confirm what God has said, he met a widowed woman. Uh -huh. She was gathering sticks. Mm -hmm. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? Mm -hmm. As she was going to get it, he called, and bring me, please, a piece of bread. Verse 12, as surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar, mm -hmm. and a little oil in a jar. Mm -hmm. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, uh -huh. that we may eat it and die. Mm -hmm. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small cake of, of bread for me from what you have, and bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son. Mm -hmm. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Verse 14 now, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. The jar of flour will not be used, mm -hmm. will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain in the land. Mm. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. Mm -hmm. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the mm. woman ah. and her family. Mm. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry. Mm -hmm. In keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Thank you. Amen. Put your hand together for Jesus Christ. Yeah. Say, I know you don't have much. The woman said, All I have is just a little, little, a little flour and a little oil left. And it's to feed my two children. Her and her son. And we're ready to die. Because the family is still going on for a very long time. And the prophet said, Don't worry. If you will do what I ask you to do, that's where sacrificial seed coming. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have anything left. The widowed woman don't have anything left if she gives all that she has to make a meal for the prophet. Mm -hmm. The prophet told her, he said, I understand the economy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that you don't have a job. I understand that Things are very hard for you. He said, but I want you to trust God. He said, let me tell you something. If you obey me, if you do what I ask yes, you to do, God. he said, I can guarantee you that the jar of flour and the jar of oil yes. will never run dry. Amen. Until the day rain falls in Israel. That is very hard to take. When you when you find yourself giving your last, say, Lord, I have this everywhere. God said, can you trust me enough? Can you re rely on me enough Thank you. to go beyond your tithes and your offerings? 
That's where seed of faith comes in. Right. There are sometimes you just feel like, you know what? Um, seed of faith. Huh? And sometimes during crusade meetings, this name comes up so regularly. Preachers will challenge you. And people say, well, maybe he needs my money. No, nobody needs your money. <laughs> The preacher is trying to bring you to a place where you can have more than enough. So whatever you have done, when you come in and you give what you give that sacrificial seed, God is saying, uh, by giving that sacrificial seed, because you have obeyed me in doing that, I will make sure that what is coming to you, in other words, your bank account will never run dry. Amen. Amen. Your home will never run dry. Amen. It's not just only coming back in money, but it will come back to you in so many ways. Yeah, no. yeah. Good health, mm-hmm. long life and prosperity, Amen. protection of God upon your life. Amen. Success is on every side. Yeah. God will always take you from one glory to another. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Every time people think they are, they are, you are going down, that's where you are going. Yes. Okay, I'm going to move from there quickly to talk about vows. What is a vow? A vow is a pledge. It's on the envelope. So what is a vow? How many of you have ever looked at the envelope and don't know what it, they mean? Raise up your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have over 10. We have 10 people in this audience tonight that did not know what all these names mean. Yes. So, but anyway, um, so a vow is a pledge. What, how do you make a vow in a service? Vow is a promise to God. A vow, when you, when you say, I want to do something, for a person, and I want to do something for God, that when you make that promise, that promise is not to that person per se. That promise is to God. Alright. Go to Psalms 50 from verse 14 through 15. Very powerful scripture. A vow. We have two kinds of vows. Two types of vows. There is a vow you pay when you are asking God to give you something. Like Hannah made a vow, Lord, if you would give me a, a, a male child, I will turn that male child back to you. Mm-hmm. That is a, another form of vows. Yes. But the one I want to talk to you tonight is a vow you make when something bad has not happened. That's what I want to share with you. When you have not gone through a catastrophe, making a vow ahead of trials and tribulations before they occur. That's the area I want to deal with in five minutes or so. Go to uh, Psalms. 50 from verse 14. Are you there? It says, Offer to God sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the most high. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Amen. One of my, uh, uh, I, I will call him a, a spiritual father, because he, he has really um, impacted so much in me. He's a white guy, fairly elderly, from uh, Nevada. He came to preach for us um, some few years back, seven days of revival. So, in one of the services, he preached a message on vows. Mm-hmm. And he gave an example of how, when he started his ministry. Uh, I'm not this, I, don't, I don't know how to tell stories when I'm preaching. I'm learning that right now. For some reason, the Holy Spirit is dropping stories in me. 
it, uh, as 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 you know uh, as a way of complimenting my preaching. This is very important. He said he, he was starting his ministry. He went to a revival, and the preacher came. The preacher was asking for a thousand dollars. He said he didn't have it. So, but he went home and went around his friends and to help help him get this thousand dollars. And he came back the following day, and he paid it mm -hmm. during the time the preacher was taking about. He doesn't know the preacher. So um, one month passed, two months passed, three months passed, five months passed. On the sixth month, he said it was um, one of their granddaughter came to visit them. Early in the morning, they were all upstairs. Mm -hmm. And the wife was making um, boiling water downstairs. And the little girl was upstairs with them, not knowing that this little girl has sneaked out from upstairs. Mm -hmm. You gotta watch these kids, we have some grandchildren, you gotta watch them. Ran, ran down from upstairs and touched the stove. Mm -hmm. And the whole hot steam water poured on her. So when they heard the girl cry, ah! so they ran downstairs and they called 911. Mm -hmm. He said the first thing that he remembered, he reminded God. Yes. He said, God, remember that I made a vow six months ago. Mm -hmm. And I paid it. And you let me know that you will protect me. Yes. And you will deliver me. Yes. When the day of trouble comes. Oh, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, he reminded God hey, before he called 911. Yes. He said they rushed this little girl to the hospital. <laughs> After the treatment, guess what? No bond. Oh, oh, little oh, girl leave. Oh, he said because God remember. <laughs> so so we can make vows today. I say, Lord, you know, um, it, just in case, and we're we'll working to 2023. Whatever trouble, I don't know what could happen to me the next day. I don't know what is ahead of me the next day. I'm making these vows today. I'm making this vow today that you will sustain me in case uh, trouble I don't know of, or a sickness I don't know of, or uh, a trial that I don't know of, or whatever is coming in front of me that I have no idea about. Amen. So that you can use this vow as a point of contact yes. to go ahead of me mm. and help me fight this fight. Yes. So when I when I run into a catastrophe in the new year or before the end of this year, then I can boldly tell God, remember yes, Lord. the vow that I've made in front of the congregation. Mm. And I paid it. Now it's your turn to step up yeah. and deliver me. Yeah. Look at the neighbor saying, neighbor, neighbor, deliver me. Deliver me. Say, Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. Give me like five more minutes to tell you about pastor's offering. These are things we never know. I'm done, man. Pastor's offering. Yeah. Quickly, quickly, turn with me to uh, Galatians 6 and 6. Mm -hmm. Galatians 6 and 6. He said, let, let him that is taught mm -hmm. in the word of God communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Mm -hmm. Another translation says, um, The instructor must receive from those that he instructs. Mm -hmm. 
So when you teach God's word, when the, when the pastor teaches God's word, the members that whoever that has heard that word mm -hmm. is supposed to respond. Amen. Uh, respond back to the preacher. We are giving you spiritual word, but you responding back to us with physical word. First Timothy 5 18. This is what I'm closing with. First Timothy 5 and 18. This is important for you to know. First Timothy, First Timothy 5 18. It says, Do not muscle and ask and us why is trading out grain. And the laborers deserves his wages. Also in Deuteronomy 25.4. So, an horse is like an animal. Uh, during the during the harvest time, there's something they tie uh, at the back of the horse, at the back of the horse. And as it's journey to harvest, the crops that you are going to be eating and selling, they say, do not close the, the horse mouth. Allow the horse to keep eating while it's harvesting these crops yeah, yeah, for you. Yeah. If you close its mouth, it will not have enough strength to help you during the harvest. Wow. That's how it is as a preacher. No, no, no. Don't leave me skinny. Oh my goodness. No. Can I, can I say what I really want to say? Mama, uh -huh. <laughs> do not leave the preacher skinny. I know that's my preacher. Don't leave me macheted. Uh -huh. Can I say what I really want to say, Mama? Yes, yes, yes. Hey, don't, don't, don't let the pastor become so skinny yeah, yeah. that he can't even get up here and dance. He can't get up here and sing. Yeah. That's why when we look at those envelopes, we see pastors uh, often. Right. That's what it means. It doesn't really matter, it could be a dollar, it could be a two, it could be, it depends on what your spirit of the Lord tells you. So, what those, some people can't preach this, but you know I can preach because I want to tell you the truth. We are talking tonight about total obedience. Right, right. Stand on your feet. So, when you, when you give me, when you give me an offering, yeah. outside your tax, uh -huh. outside your offering, and when they add up there, they give me what, whatever it is, they mention that it's separated from the church. So what that does for me, mama, is that on my way home, I can go through, I know how to go through drive-through. <laughs> I know how to go through drive through. Look at number say drive through. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for me to go through drive through. What up, brother? Is still open. Can I really say what I really want to say tonight? Because I felt the liberty in this place. Look at the number say, yeah, 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 yeah. I know the whole world is watching. They say, wow. I never said that to someone that let me say, yeah, I have to say it because this is what you call total work or oh, yeah. So when you get your paycheck, you in, in your mind you start thinking about that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you know what? I don't I, I don't want my pastor to be skinny. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yes, my wife said, Help him, Lord. Yes, help him, Lord. Yes, I love what I bugger. They have this super sad man, I'm telling you. And, and, and the, the, the whole container of, of, of <laughs> us, <laughs> the whole container of, 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 uh, of Sprite. 
Yeah, and then, and then the, the French fries. Yeah, man. The French, the French fries. The French fries is so juicy. And then they have onion rings. So, you see that? You get what I'm saying? They have, they have onion rings. I love their onion rings. <laughs> and then, and then they have this. They have this. I can't remember the name because I haven't eaten it for a long time. Huh? Men, um, party men. Oh, oh Lord! It's about three or four, three or four, uh, three or four uh, pies of, of meat. <laughs> with with American cheese. And bola and all of that, and you know, loaded with all pickles, lettuce, tomatoes, onion, lettuce, pickles, tomatoes, lettuce, pickles, tomatoes, lettuce, pickles, tomatoes. Mama, you know what I mean. Uh huh. Uh huh. And by the time they try to come on that, you'll be as huge as this. So don't don't waste your time trying to eat it while in your car. Take it home. When you go home, undress and put on some, something simple. Uh -huh. And cross your legs and turn the TV on. Some of you don't know how to relax after all the after all the days to labor and work. That's why some of you have headaches. You know, you wake up, your hand is heavy holding you because you don't know how to relax. That's right. Because we're so uptight and we carry everything on our head that today must happen today. Look at the name and say, Relax. Yes. <laughs> Mama, you don't know, relax. You hear what I'm saying? Relax. Uh -huh. God is done it. Look at the name and say, God is done it. So when you feed the preacher like that, so when 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 he's getting ready to come back the next day, when you look at him on Sunday, his face will be so fresh. Thank you. Hey, Lord. we bless the Lord. Thank you. 